Hello and welcome back to the Jolly Franchers YouTube channel. We are a small group of people making a video game called The Kid Detective. I'm James Franch, the pink Jolly Francher, which I've been informed is watermelon from the last video. And today we're going to take a step further from our last video, which was making pixel art characters in GIMP in sort of a visual novel style and animate pixel art in GIMP. Now this could apply to any type of pixel art you're making, but for me, I'm doing visual novel characters blinking and moving their mouths. So get excited, and if you like these videos, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below about what other types of videos you want to learn. You want to learn. You want to learn. That's, that's the right word for that. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with some pixel character art that I showed you how to do in the last video. Check, check it out. Link in the description below. And for my purposes, I'm going to make the mouth move and I'm going to make the eyes blink. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And we'll start with making the eyes blink because it's pretty easy. For me, I like to have sort of a middle frame of the eyes half closed on their way to blinking. So as you can see, I'm just narrowing, narrowing the eye, you know, from the top and from the bottom. She's on her way to blinking. It's pretty easy. And then the, the last one will just be the eyes totally closed. And then I'm just going to duplicate this one. And on this one, I'm just going to totally close the eye. Okay, now as you can see when I sort of click on and off the layers, it looks like she's blinking. Now I'm going to show you what I do for basic mouth movements during dialogue. It's as if you're like lip syncing, uh, but you don't know the words. And the technique in animation for doing that is as if you're saying mau a You want like a closed mouth shape like like this. You want an ah shape, and you want an ooh vowel shape with the lips. For the ah shape, really quick, I like to just, you know, pretend that the lower lip is how open their mouth is. And then I move the top lip up by one pixel, you know, just to show that it is, it is opening. And it's gonna, it's gonna look crazy for a bit. That's just the way of things. I remember the lip was four pixels wide. So it might be three pixels when it's open and it's a little bit stretched. And then I'm just gonna, you know, fill in the lip down here. We'll do something with the horrible inside of the mouth. That's just black right now. We don't We don't want that unless we have some sort of cosmic horror character. <laughs> So now that I have sort of the outline of the lip, I'm going to put a little bit of that under lip shading to give it a bit of dimension and like chin crease when the mouth opens. And now I'm going to put some teeth into this toothless mouth. And the teeth go sort of back into the head at a certain point. You don't just want to draw them straight across. And then there's going to be a tongue in there. Okay, so for me, this is a good ah position, and now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and make the ooh mouth position. So now that I have my blinking sprites and my mouth moving sprites, I can now make a sprite sheet to import into Unity. I'm going to go ahead and make just a, a larger, I'm going to make it twice as big. Um, you can do this a whole lot more scientifically. You can perfectly choose the size of your sprite sheet to like perfectly fit however many images you have to put on there and save space. But uh, for a person that doesn't like math like me, uh, you're in luck because Unity is very forgiving. It's very easy to use. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up my character and all of the images by selecting open as layers. And once I've opened up my five layers on this sheet, I'm going to spread them out. You want to spread them out in such a way that you can draw a box around them and not have, you know, another image in that box with it. Because what Unity does is it like slices out this image using like a rectangular box. And so if, for instance, if I left this image on top of this one, it would slice this section of the image and you'd just be able to see another face peeking through the arm <laughs> of this woman. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and separate them out. I'm just really gonna make sure I don't accidentally place these wrong. And once I am satisfied, and if I make a mistake, we can always fix it. Pretty easy to fix. But for now, I'm going to export this as the client SS for Sprite Sheet. So I'm going to come over here into Unity. I'm going to import the Sprite Sheet that I just got into Unity. Here's how I do it. I go to Assets to Reveal in Finder. And then I'm just going to go over to my game folder. Uh, and I'm going to pin the assets to the sidebar here so that I can go to my sprite sheet and just drag it in. Okay, so now in my project window in Unity, if I go to my assets, my sprite sheet should be here. <laughs> Look at that! Now, the, this, these are some very important steps for pixel art. You want to go down here to filter mode, and it's by default on bilinear filter mode, which is going to sort of blur the pixels by default. And you're also going to want to go to compression here and do none, so that it's just the perfect pure pixel art that you made. And you're going to press apply. Now, if this was a single image that I didn't want to, you know, cut apart, I would leave sprite mode as single. But I'm going to want to cut these five pieces apart so that I can use them separately. So I'm going to go here and press multiple. And then I'm going to open up the sprite editor. Here, when it says unimplied import settings, this is because you pressed sprite mode multiple or you changed the filter mode or the compression mode and you didn't press apply down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna press apply. I can always change it. And then I want to slice apart these images. So I'm gonna go up here to slice. And I'll, I'll show you what uh, all three of these things do. If you place your uh, pixels very carefully, you could do something like uh, these images are 500 by 288. And so if I place the images very carefully on this sprite sheet, then the grid by cell size would be, you know, very helpful. Or if you have a sprite sheet of a lot of like 16 by 16 things, you want to fit as many as you can into one sheet. This is the way to do it. You can also do it by cell count. I've never done this. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this. You came <laughs> to the wrong tutorial. <laughs> Something to note here is that if you choose a center pivot with pixel art, it might choose a, a pivot point. A and the pivot point of an image is where it is drawn from, I believe. And so it would render the image from the center out to the edges. Um, and the only problem with choosing center, you can choose it. On the y-axis, the center of my image is 140.5 pixels. So that's half a pixel. So something weird is going to start to happen, and you're going to get like one chunky line and one thin line, and your pixels are not going to be even. But another option, and I, I think this is easier, is to go custom and just set the pivot point to 0, 0. It's going to draw from the top left part of the sprite. If we look at the pixel measurement now, it's zero, zero, no 0.5, no decimals. It's going to make it just how we want it. So I'm going to apply these settings. Now we're going to create an animation. As you can see here, I dragged in my image 
from the asset window and it's completely black. And that's because I'm using the universal render pipeline. You can look up videos on that from maybe the Brackey's YouTube channel or, or something similar. It sets it so the image is black unless I light it using a light in the scene. And to get around that, I'm just gonna change the material to sprite unlit default so that it doesn't need to be lit. In order to start animating this, I am going to go down here and add a tab. I'm gonna add the animation tab. And to begin animating the client, Sprite Sheet 2, create an animator and an animation clip. Okay, I'm gonna create it. And I'm going to name this the client talks. And we'll do the talking animation first. And I'm going to go ahead and drag my project folder up here so I can access the pictures at the same time as I access the animation window. So I'm going to start sort of blindly dragging images in here chaotically. And this is a place where you could better place your images so you know which one is which if they're not different from one another. So once I have the images I want in here, I'm going to go ahead and start with a closed mouth. And as you can see, I'm just spacing them out around here. You can copy and paste them. Uh, I click on one side and I hold shift and I click on this side and I'm gonna press Command C or Control C on Windows and Command V or Control V and paste. And now we've got a little looping animation of her talking. Look at that, she's come to life. So I'm, I'm just gonna do a few more of these for about two seconds and I'm gonna, you know, space them out a bit differently from one another so there's some variety as if she's saying different words than just ma wa ma wa ma wa And once I'm happy with how she's talking, I am going to go down here and create a new clip on the same animated game object. So I'm gonna name this the client. So I'm gonna drag in from the project window the images of the client, as she is named, blinking. And once I have these, I'm gonna have her blink at maybe about the two second mark. As you can see here, I've just arranged the blinking clips so that her eyes are open, half closed, totally closed, and then they pop back open. I've done one at about two seconds. I did two in a row at five seconds, and I'm going to do one more at around eight seconds. And then I'm just going to put one more at the 10 seconds. So now we have our two clips. We have a blinking character, and we have a talking character. Say your game is something like mine and you want to control the flow of these animations. A text box appears in the bottom, they say something, and then after they're done talking, they are just standing there blinking. So you are gonna wanna go up here to window animation and you're gonna want an animator window. And as you can see, we have the client talks animation and we have the client animation. So for my purposes, uh, whenever I call the client talks animation, I'm going to want to make a transition directly from the client talks animation. If you right click on this, you can make transition and then you can drag this arrow anywhere you want it. So I'm gonna drag it to the client and so now what'll happen is the client will talk for two seconds and it'll go directly to the blinking animation. Uh, right now I'm gonna shortly just prepare a little demo of this, of the client talking and then going into the blinking state. And next time I'm going to show you how I created this using a free tool in Unity called Fungus. Okay, so here we can see our character is talking. It's the client. She's selling her thing and she talked and now she's blinking. It all worked. I promise. <laughs> Next time I will show you how I make this whole scene, make the text boxes, make the game go, uh, and I'll teach you how to use a program called Fungus in Unity. So I bet you're wondering, 
if you have made a mistake in your pixel art and you've already imported it into GIMP and you've already made animations, you could be pretty upset if you don't know how to fix it easily. So I have noticed, and this was a complete accident, that if you can see here, her bracelet is, is transparent. You can just see the ground. You can see the rug in mom's pawn shop straight through her arm. Oh boy. And so I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to fix that. So I'm gonna go into my sprite sheet here and I am going to pick just a lovely gold color to fill in the bracelet. I'm literally just gonna bucket fill every bracelet a nice gold color. And once you've applied your changes, you're going to export it again, export to the same file. It's gonna overwrite that file. And then you're gonna go back into Unity, go to Assets, Reveal and Finder. You're going to go back to that image and drag it into the same folder in your Assets folder that it's in. And then it's gonna ask if you wanna replace it. If you don't drag the replacement image into the exact same folder, it's not gonna ask you if you wanna replace it. And the replacing is what is such an easy fix about this and it's gonna take a second, and voila, it's not a big change, but that is a poopy yellow bracelet that she now has. Hooray, that's how you fix it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Next week, I'll be showing you how easy it is to make visual novels using completely free tools, using Fungus and Unity and as we've already covered, GIMP. And if you like these videos and you wanna see more because we have a lot more to show and to tutorialize, then please subscribe and leave a like and comment below. That would help out a lot. Thank you so much.